Hello and welcome back to our webcast series on the topic of plane and descriptive geometry. So in this video we're going to look at how to locate the shortest perpendicular distance between two skew lines. So we'll begin first of all by looking at um, a setup here and we'll go through the concept and the procedure that we're going to take in order to find our shortest perpendicular distance. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look at a 2D setup like what you'll have on your drawing sheet and we'll go through the stages of how to solve that. So the first thing I'd recommend is that if you haven't already done so, I would look at our previous video on how to locate the set of parallel planes that contains our two skew lines, like so. Um, so because we're going to be borrowing from that in uh, to solve this question. Um, the approach that we're going to take for our question is we're going to first of all do it in two stages. We're going to find first of all the distance between our two skew lines and then we're going to find the location of our shortest perpendicular distance. So in order to find our um, true distance between our two skew lines, it's also the same distance between two our two parallel planes. So we know from our previous video that whenever we have two skew lines, there's always one view where the two will appear parallel. And the distance here is the true distance for our shortest or our shortest distance between our two skew lines. Um, it's also the view that gives us an edge view of these parallel planes or this set of parallel planes that contain the two lines. So if we go back to our 3D we can see there's a two identical planes, this plane containing this line, this plane here containing this line. And the distance between or the space between our two planes is also the same as the, the shortest possible distance between our two skew lines. So we're borrowing from that approach. Um, if we just add, say, a line here to represent that distance, we can see that if we were to look straight in like so, we can see, yes, in fact, that distance there is the distance between our two planes, and it is the distance, or the shortest distance between our two skew lines. And this is the shortest perpendicular distance. And the reason it's the shortest perpendicular distance is, and if I just give you the example here of a room, well, we if we were to measure the height of our ceiling from our floor, well, we instinctively know that to do that, we take our tape measure, and we measure straight up between the two of them. We know that we have to have orientate our measure tape such that it's perpendicular to the floor on both axes. If it was angled in any way, well then it will be giving a longer reading and it won't be the true um, height of the room. It won't be the true distance between our two parallel planes. This is why when we measure a room, we always measure it up against a wall. Because if we were to measure it up against the wall, well the wall, because it's perpendicular to the floor, takes care of one aspect of that. All we need to worry about then is whether it's our tape measure is tilted forward or tilted back. So if it's not doing either, it's going to give us a true reading. If it is tilted back, then it's going to give us a false reading. So that's why our shortest perpendicular distance here, this line here, must be perpendicular to both the skew line and the plane, the shortest perpendicular distance. And it's worthwhile noting as well that if we were to look from above, the skew line here is also perpendicular to the trace of the plane um, that it's measuring be be uh, between. So we can see this here is perpendicular. It will also be perpendicular to this trace here, like so. So the approach that we're going to take then is going to be, first of all, to locate that distance, the distance of this guy. Because at the moment, he could be located anywhere. He could be positioned anywhere. We're just going to find the distance. And we'll just explain that by saying, we can see, if we move him along like so, we can see he could be any position there. In fact, he could be attached to one of our skew lines. But this isn't the location. This is the true distance, but it's not the location of it, because at the moment he's only attached to one of our skew lines. And if I was to slide him along my object, you can see the position I'm looking for is when he is in contact with both skew lines. So this here is the true position for our shortest perpendicular distance. The measurement is the same no matter what position he is between our two planes, but there's only one position where he'll be in contact with both skew lines at the same time. And we'll also notice that if we look at that skew line and look straight in at it, straight in at our plane, when the line is appears as a point, well, our two skew lines appear to cross. We're going to use that idea to locate that position. So what we're going to do next then is we're going to set up our drawing and we're going to see how we go about finding our uh, shortest perpendicular distance. So here we have our setup. We have two skew lines, A, B, and C, D in elevation and plan. And we're going to solve the question in 3D, and then we're going to do it as well in 2D at the same time. 
So the first idea is that we want to find this space between our two planes. So to do that, we're going to work with what we've seen in our previous video. We're going to create a small triangular portion of our plane. So we do that by taking our second skew line and drawing a copy of it attached to one end of our original skew line. So it doesn't matter which line we take here. In this case, I'm going to take the copy of CD and attach it to the point B. Could have taken point A. It doesn't matter initially as long as you do the same in our plan view. So there's our copied line like so, using our, par our parallel set squares or our set squares, sliding set squares to do that. We do the same then in plan view. So if we've attached it to B in elevation, we have to attach it to B in plan. And then we complete the triangle by drawing in a level line from the opposite point on our skew line, so point A here. So there is our level line like so. That makes our triangular portion of our larger plane. And where our level line crosses our copied line here, we project that down to plan view. And that gives us the location of that point in our plan view, completing the square. And the reason we took a level line is because a level line will appear as a true length line in our plan view, because the next stage we want to do is look along that true length line. And as you look at the green line here, we'll see by seeing that as a point, we see the plane as an edge. Our two skew lines will appear parallel. And now we have the true distance between them. So in our plan view, we look along our true length line. We create our x1, y1 line, so our auxiliary plane perpendicular to the direction we're looking in it and we project each of our points, measuring our distances back two views from our elevation. So there's our point AB in our auxiliary, and then we have the points C and D in our auxiliary, and we see uh, the two are parallel. So we now know that that is the proper view. Um, and if we want, we can just draw in the two planes that the two are resting on, just to demonstrate that as well. So that's the distance, the true distance between the two of them. Next, we want to locate the position for that for our line like so. And the way we do that is we want to look along that line or straight in at our planes. So straight in means perpendicular. So we look perpendicular to our planes or our skew lines. And we project a second auxiliary, which is going to be parallel to that. So using our sliding set squares, we can draw a parallel line parallel to our skew lines. We project each of our points, again, measuring back two views. So back one view, back two views. So we're measuring from our uh, plan view in this case, and because the distance of each of our points is quite far away from our x1, y1, what we're going to do is we're going to put in a datum line to prevent our image going off the page here. So we've shortened the distance between them by drawing in a line parallel to our x1, y1, and we're measuring our distance and stepping it off. So they're A, B, and C, and D, and that gives us our two skew lines, and we can now see where the location for our shortest perpendicular distance is. It's seen here as a point. So we project that back to our views, and there we have our location in our first auxiliary. So you can see clearly we're looking along that line, and that's why we see it here as a point view. And all we do then is just project that back to our views. So where it hits the line A, B here, it'll have to hit the line A, B here. Where it hits the line C, D here, it'll have to hit the line C, D. And that's the location of it in our plan view. And note how it's perpendicular to our true length line. We then project it up into our front elevation, locating it in our front elevation. So that's our shortest perpendicular distance solved um, and projected back through each of our views. The last thing I want to do here is just to locate the traces of our planes um, as it will be seen in elevation and plan views. The traces are horizontal trace where our plane here crosses the horizontal plane, the ground, and our vertical plane here. So there's our giving us our vertical trace. So the way we do it, if let's first of all find our horizontal trace. We can see our horizontal trace, like so, is actually seen as a point in our first auxiliary. So I could project him down and where it crosses the XY line, that's my horizontal trace, like so. And here's the same for my second plane. Um, now, if you don't have your auxiliary, you can always do it by extending each of our um, skew lines until it hits the ground or the horizontal plane. Um, let's just have a look and see how we do that. We can see if we extend it, our first skew line here until it hits the ground, that point there is on our horizontal trace. So the way we do that is we go to our front elevation and we extend the line onto the ground. There's the horizontal um, point, our point on the ground there like so. Project it down and extend them on in our plan view to give us the point. And you can see that's on our horizontal trace. If we have that done, we can actually just take our level line like so, and we can draw a parallel line giving us the horizontal trace. Or alternatively, we could just extend our second skew line or a copied line until it hits the horizontal plane, giving us a second point. 
So that would be the same as extending this guy down, dropping him down to the horizontal plane. So there's where it hits the xy, projecting it down, and continuing it along, giving us a second point, and there will be the two of them connected, giving us our horizontal trace. So whichever way you want to go about doing it, whichever is most convenient for yourself. Um, to find our trace of our second plane, we simply do exactly the same thing by projecting or extending our second skew line until it hits the ground. So there's CD extended onto the ground there, project it down to plan, and extend them on, giving us our point. And using your sliding set squares, you can go parallel to your original horizontal trace. And exactly the same idea or approach when it comes to finding our vertical trace, like so. In this case, we're going to extend on our level line until it meets the back wall or our vertical plane, like so. So there's our extension, like so, giving us our point on our vertical trace. So here's our level line in our plan view. We're going to extend them onto it's the back wall, our XY line in plan view. We're going to project it up into elevation, and we're just going to extend them on, locating as our point. So there's our point, this point here. And then we just connect down to our point like so, giving us our vertical trace, and just sliding our side set squares across, we can locate the vertical trace for our second plane. And there is our plane there represented, just shaded in to make it a little bit easier to visualize. So that's the method that we use to find the shortest perpendicular distance between two skew lines. Um, our next video then is going to be on how to find the shortest horizontal distance between two skew lines. Um, but as always, I hope this is some help to you and stay tuned for more videos. Thank you very much.